So you're doing a poster presentation. This is how you make a poster in PowerPoint. So when you head over to PowerPoint, this is what it looks like, but we need to change it up to make it an actual poster because these, it, this is kind of like what we're aiming for. It's something like this that shows our results to the world. Well, at least to the conference. And so here we go. Uh, we need to get rid of all of this to start with. So if we click here and just go delete and delete, it gives us our nice blank template. Now we need to get it into poster presentation format. So to depending on the conference, they'll let you know how they want it, but typically it's portrait and it's A0. So let's have a look, how do we do that? So first of all, we need to go to design and we need to go to slide uh, size. And then down here, you go to custom size slide, size, slide, 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 size. You get it, you know what I'm saying. And here, um, you know, we've got all these sort of things, but really we wanna go down to custom. And here is where you can find all of the uh, different, uh, sizes, let's have a look, paper sizes, this is what we're doing here. So just pause here if you need to. So we're looking for 841 millimeters to 594 millimeters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in uh, the slides, I'm gonna go to portrait and I want the width to be, now this is in centimeters, which doesn't really help me. Actually, can I put it in millimeters? Let's have a look. So width I want uh, 594 and let's put millimeters. Oh, and it does change it for me. That's clever. Thanks very much. And then 841 millimeters. And it doesn't matter which one you choose here because there's nothing on the slide. So we can just click ma maximize. And then this is where we have the right size for our poster presentation. Now we need to actually fill it with stuff. So before we do let that, let's have a look at all of the different sort of like uh, inspiration we can get from around the world. Now, your institution may have a uh, sort of template that they use. This is Harvard's Department of Government and it is rubbish. It's so bad, but it gives you the sort of idea about what should be included and the sort of layout. So here we've got title, name of authors, email, and then we've got abstract, introduction, materials and methods, results, conclusions. And you can see there is portrait um, and depending on your preference or the uh, conference, it will sort of like vary, but we're doing portrait. So this doesn't really help us, but it gives us an idea of the sorts of sections that need to be in there. Um, and so we need to do the same here. Now, I like to head over to get inspiration for my uh, posters. So I go to my favorite browser, which is DuckDuckGo, uh, my favorite search engine, sorry, DuckDuckGo, and I go to images, and here I've just put good academic poster design, and I filtered by tall, because I want the kind of like, you know, tall ones, the portrait ones. So this is where you do that. You just go tall, square, or wide. If you're doing wide, you know, that you can see that sort of layout. Um, but I want portrait, so I'll go tall. And now this gives us a nice sort of like insight into the sorts of posters that we can create because this is what a poster presentation session is really like. You've got all these posters and I'm looking for one that stands out. This one stands out to me. Uh, let's have a scroll through. What else? Uh, you know, it's just so much work. Oh, this one I quite like. Um, this one is quite good as well. So I'm just sort of like scanning through and I'm like, okay, what can I take inspiration from? I'm just going to choose something nice and simple. So what about this? Here we've got a nice academic uh, sort of poster layout. I like that very much. You can see that it's, uh, you know, easy to replicate in PowerPoint. And that's what we're really looking for. You can go crazy with circles and nice big images. And we'll talk about how you can do that later on. But ultimately, we're just looking for a blank template for us to use. So now all I have to do is use this as an inspiration. So how do I turn, let's get rid of that. I don't know why that popped up. Now, how do I turn this into sort of something that I can actually work with? So I like to go up here to insert, and then I go to shapes. And depending on what sort of shape. I'm just going to use this basic rectangle, but you can use this rounded corners if you want a bit of a softer edge. Um, we can change this later, but ultimately I just want to use this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go lock drawing mode and I'm going to lock that drawing mode and I'm going to sort of like try to replicate um, just a simple layout that I can use for my poster. So here 
I want the title. So let's go in there. Oh, that's not what I want. So I'm going to go shape fill, no fill, and then shape outline. I'm just going to keep it as that. And then I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go set as default shape. Let's go back to insert. Let's go back to shapes. Let's go back to here and then lock drawing mode. And now we're just going to sort of play about with that um, outline. So let's pull up the thing that I found which is this one here. I'm gonna put that on another screen that you can't see, but ultimately we're gonna sort of like just work with, um, yeah, creating that. So let's have a look. It's got two columns like this, like that, and actually, oh, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, one thing you'll notice is that each section has a heading and text. So we can actually sort of like make our lives a little bit easier by actually putting that in anyway. So within each section, we've got not only just the text, but also the heading. So I'm gonna put that in now, and then I can just copy and paste that, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm just gonna create a heading here, and let's change that to actually, I'm gonna fill it in let's make it black and uh, I'm going to add text just down here uh, where is it edit text and I'm going to put in um, introduction there we are I'm going to copy all of that and then obviously I'm going to make it much bigger so if I go to home and then I can just increase that let's make it nice and bold and let's put it to the side um, there we are so there is sort of like my basic block now I'm going to change that basic block I'm going to copy that I'm just going to group them together group now I've got a basic block that I can sort of copy and paste anywhere without having to do all the weird formatting later so you can spend as much time as you want making this pretty but this is just fine if you just want to kind of get that layout so there we are there's one I'm going to copy and paste this across it's still going to say introduction but that doesn't matter um, and then uh, what else have we got okay Okay, we've got down here so oh let's grab that whole group again drag and drop that there and then we just sort of like play with the layout just like we had before so that's what it looks like and then at the bottom there is a longer one like this let's make that skinnier all right so this is where you need to count how many things you've got, how many boxes. Now, we need, now I've got a list here. We've got to have a spot for all of this stuff. We've got abstract, introduction, methods, results, conclusions, next work, references, and acknowledgements. That's eight things. So at the moment, I've got one, two, three, four, five. So we probably need uh, three more, maybe at least a couple more. Maybe we could split this box up into two. Maybe that would work for us. I mean, we're just playing about at the moment. It's just having a bit of fun. Just trying to work that sort of like broad layout so there we are there's another little section that I could put in and then also let's have a look uh, let's take this one copy paste that and the intro the like references and uh, the uh, acknowledgements only needs to be little so let's just put some little boxes down here and then that gives me a basic layout you can see it was super easy copy and paste taking inspiration from other things so if you want to play about with the arrangement and stuff we can do that later when we're looking at colors but ultimately this is a great starting point and now we need to fill it with content let's talk about that so I've got my poster here from another sort of thing I did years and years ago but you can see that I've got one two three four five six seven sections that I need to fill out introduction approach uh, some people have an abstract as well as an introduction um, so we can go through and just make sure that we've got all of these sections and all of the text so introduction let's have a look maybe we want to put methods here um, maybe we want to put results and discussion here because it's a bigger section result oh my results there we are results um, and then let's ungroup that so that we can make this bit a little bit smaller again. There we go. That's what we want it to look like. Results um, here. Let's have a look. What else do we need? We need uh, conclusions. So let's have conclusions here. Conclu con conclusions. There we are. Is that how you spell it? Oh, God. Introduction and what else we're missing something uh, methods introduction conclusions and then down here. We should say next work Hmm 
And then here, oh, I'll tell you what, let's leave this space for a nice image. Let's do that. So let's ungroup this. Um, and let's get rid of that. And we can have a nice image here to attract attention to our poster. That's what we want. And up here, obviously, we've got titles. So um, there we are. There's the outline. There's all the sections. And now we need to go through and actually put um, all of the different sort of like things. So let's have a look at that. Um, the editor will speed this up so you don't have to wait for me to do this. But this is what it looks like. One thing I like to do is just sort of like draw a little text box in here. It just makes it easier to sort of like put in the text, especially when you've got all these things grouped together. So here I'm going to copy and paste across from another introduction. And you can see that it's quite a lot of text. And uh, quite often I'll go to chat GPT and say, hey, create less text, make, make this uh, paragraph shorter because it's for a poster presentation. But um, at the moment, it doesn't really matter because we're just sort of like putting in those little bits. All right, so I have filled in some of the sections. This is what it looks like at the moment. Um, you can see I've got my title up here. I'm going to put my names underneath that. So, you know, we can move that up and uh, work with that later. We can actually get rid of this text box if we want for the moment, because that was just there to sort of like help us decipher the layout. Um, and in here, now this is where sort of like, you know, you need to make sure that the content is succinct and there's not too many words. This is too many words for me. So I would go to chat GPT and say, make this a bullet point, uh, you know, three bullet points, make sure that there's no superfluous information, that sort of stuff. But one thing that's become very popular in the uh, poster presentation world is attracting attention. So let's just go here and say, okay, I want something here to attract attention because I know from other posts and presentations that really it's the big images that attract people. So you can just head over to something like ChatGPT like I did here. And I said, image of futuristic carbon nanotubes in the sunlight. And this is what we've ended up with here. So I, I've literally downloaded that and then that can be a nice little spot in my uh, poster just there. If it's a little bit too big or small, just right click and then go to crop. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just going to take that up to here. We may want to reposition that so the sunlight is in there. But ultimately, that is what it looks like and you can see that it immediately draws the attention much better than just having text and text and text. And obviously, I would put in next work down here, acknowledgements and references. Um, but ultimately, you can see it's very easy once you've used this sort of like blocking and layout structure and taking inspiration from other people, that it's very easy to create a nice looking poster very, very simply. Now, in terms of coloring and layout and all that sort of stuff, let's talk about that. Now we've got to a point where we want to sort of like fine tune the layout and stuff. One thing I recommend you do is head over to view and turn on um, grid lines and or guides. Either or will work well for this, but you can see that, oh, get rid of that. Guides, uh, you can see that once you've got these grid lines on it, you can see little dots which will help you kind of like arrange and make sure everything's nice and lined up. But there's an easier way to do it. For example, if I want this one and this one all lined up, I would group them together into one group. I can align them to different things by using this, the align function. I use it a lot. So if I choose two things and then I say align, we can align the top. Boom, there we are. The lines the top, lines the bottom. You're going to align it just to make sure that everything is pixel perfect because when you're working on your poster presentation you do want to make sure that everything looks nice and by aligning things making sure things are evenly spaced it does make it nice on the eye so a couple of things let's turn off the uh, grid lines because that's a little bit distracting for us at the moment um, but ultimately once you've got a layout that you like this is where you can start playing about with colors you can go up to here design and you can see that you've got variants colors and you've got all of these sort of like hues that you've got, but really your university, your institution will have particular colors. So often you would put a logo. So for example, I could uh, change this up here uh, to that. And I could say, okay, I want my 
logo to be up there. This is what the logo looks like. There we are, that's where I want it. And let's make that one a bit smaller. Let's make that a bit bigger. All right, there we are. So you can see that, you know, you can put in logos, you can put in stuff. This logo color is yellow, which means that, you know, I used that color for the rest of my poster when I was uh, doing my postdoc, I think this was. Um, but ultimately, yeah, that's what it looks like. And you can change up the colors of all of the stuff. I really like this sort of like, you know, negative um, color for the different sections. And then it's about sizing, you know, make sure that you're happy with the different sizing. You could make that smaller, for example, so you can say, actually, I only want it to look about that big, so that's 44. And I would go through and I would make sure that each section is 44. You can just go in and type there, 44. There we are, and then you can go through and make sure that everything sort of like is the same. The one thing I'd like to make sure is always the same is the text size um, and the heading sizes. Everything else kind of like, you know, falls into place after those things, um, you know, uh, are working together. Um, you've got your nice big uh, image here, and really that's about it. Once you've got all the stuff in, it's about exporting it, and that's how you do it to make sure it's perfect for printing. So once you got your poster, you need to make sure it is pixel perfect for printing. And this is how you make sure you do that. So once you've got your design, all you need to do is head up to file and go to print. And then once you've printed, you just need to select Microsoft print to PDF, entire presentation print, and then it will ask you to save somewhere. So let's just go on to uh, desktop and click save. Oh, need to give it a title, uh, poster. And once that's done, you can see that you end up with this, which is perfect. And what I like to do is zoom in and out just to make sure that everything, you know, isn't blurry. You need to make sure that your images are not blurry. You need to make sure you can read the right text. Now, a lot of people say you shouldn't use a serif font, um, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I've heard other counter arguments that mean like Times New Roman is easier to read when you're scanning it. But ultimately, as long as it looks nice, as long as it's legible, as long as you can read it, that's all that really matters. And you can see that it was very easy to create create a poster in PowerPoint and that's how you do it for yourself. Let me know in the comments if you've got any tips or tricks. All right, if you like that video, go check out this one where I talk about how to make a great research poster, all of the things you should and shouldn't include. Go check it out.